What's up, guys? It me, Rollo Bomber. Uh, I just want to say uh, thank you guys for your patience. Uh, I told you I was going, doing like a little moving situation thing, so I was sort of away from my computer for a few days, but now I'm back. And not only am I back, we are back with some interesting news. After an interview with Papa Namora himself from a person who goes by every eye. So, there's uh, this is all on Cage 13, and he makes some comments, uh, and so there are comments and questions regarding Kingdom Hearts 3, and you can find this all on Cage 13. It's actually split up in two separate articles, even though it's all the same interview. So, let's just let's just go through the entire thing so that we don't miss anything. So, every eye stated. Cage 3 will be, according to your statements, the darkest chapter of the saga, which will put Sora and the other protagonists in several dramatic moments. The series, however, is not completely new to large doses of pathos. So how are these statements reflected in the script? And compared to the past, how difficult was the writing between the darkest introsep between the darkest introspection, Jesus Christ. Of the heroes and a plot that must draw the sums of a 10 years old franchise. So, Nomura did state before that Kingdom Hearts 3 will be the darkest uh, game in the saga. Uh, it will feature a more mature Sora. He said that pretty much at the beginning, like in 2013. And from what we've seen in the Kingdom Hearts 3 trailers with uh, <laughs> you know who. You can see that there's going to be a lot of impactful moments. And. But it's not like. Like he was saying, Kingdom Hearts 3 isn't new to something like that. Because Birth by Sleep and 3DS basically kicked our hearts. Or not. <laughs> Birth by Sleep and 3 of over 2 days kicked our hearts in the dicks. So. It's nothing new. Nomura stated. The battle against Xehanort, which came to life in the first game of the series, so Sora vs. Ansem will finally come to an end. Moreover, since the journey is Sora traveling ser uh, serves to alleviate the pain of having lost his friends in the past, aka the general atmosphere, or I don't know, the general atmosphere will be truly dramatic, at least in some phases. Compared to the previous chapters, in actuality, I think the Kingdom Hearts 3 plot will not be that grim after all. I literally sighed with huge relief when I saw this because I know he said the ending was going to be hard to accept and I know he said it was going to be the darkest in the series but in my mind I'm thinking he might pull some Final Fantasy 15 heart string pulling stuff and I don't want that in Kingdom Hearts but it turns out it's not that grim after all. Neither the relationships between the characters, whether between the main he the main ones or between the protagonists of the various worlds, nor the journey of Sora alongside Donald Duck and Goofy will be particularly dark. In fact, I will tell you, it could even tear out more laughter in the audience than in the past. In this sense, therefore, we could say it will be a truly wide-ranging story, well balanced between the dramatic... the dramatic... Dr the dramatic aspect, I'm not even going to try and use that word. <laughs> I didn't do well that well in, I, did, I didn't do that well in high school. Uh, and the comic. <laughs> uh, every, every eye stated. One or every eye question. One of the predominant elements of the aesthetics of Kingdom Hearts are the clothes. Real Kingspin in the character design of each character and capable of uh, amalgamating the cartoon style 
with that of Final Fantasy. How did you conceive that new character design? What were the inspirations toward their realization? Actually, I almost never get much of the character design process. Most of the time, I find myself buying so many clothes that I like, I try them on and they inspire me. And indeed, there have been occasions in the past where I use some clothes I bought myself as a character, uh, as character designs for some characters. Uh, a rather exhaustive example will be found in Kingdom Hearts 3 and concerns that Sora, the look that Sora will have in the world of Pirates of the Caribbean. The designer of the Buccaneer jacket, in fact, is inspired by one of my clothes. You heard that right, folks. The clothes from our beloved Kingdom Hearts characters that we have known for over 10 years has only been inspired because Nomura had so many trips to Hot Topic, Ross, and JC Pennies. Every eye question, even in the previous games, clothes became a playful excuse to give life to the fusions which in terms of gameplay gave enormous variety to the combat system and to the playful experience. Will we find the same manic attention to the use of the clothing in Kingdom Hearts 3? So he's mainly referring to but by this question, he's mainly referring to Kingdom Hearts 2 and Kingdom Hearts Perfect by Sleep and I guess I'll give a mention to Dream Drop Distance because in Kingdom Hearts 2 one of the main aspects for gameplay, as you all know, was dry forms, but that only came because Sora got new clothes from the Three Good Fairies. And then with Birth by Sleep, there was the Keyblade uh, glider thing with the Keyblade armor, and that came from their own clothes. So that was a part of the gameplay. And then I guess they could also have story significance because in Kingdom Hearts Dream Drop Distance, as you all know, the X on Sora's clothes, which was called the Recusant Sigil, it helped young Xehanort and the other members of Organization 13 know where Sora was during his Marco Mask exam at all times. So Nomura stated, No, this time the clothes of the protagonist will have no effect on the gameplay or on the combat phases, but the type of battle that you can manage will depend exclusively on the use of the Keyblades. The form they will take is the very representation of this novelty and will have no direct effect on the characters. So basically, all the forms and stuff that we've seen for Sora, like the guard form, the second form, uh, the twin shoot blasters, uh, you know, all the other transformations that changes his clothes, it doesn't come from the new clothes that Sora gets. Of course, I'm sure that the clothes will have some significance for the story, like, I guess, protecting Sora from the darkness, just like how Riku and Mickey's new clothes do the same thing. But Sora's new clothes won't affect gameplay at all. It, as, in, as a matter of fact, it's more like a part of Kingdom Hearts 2, but not really because Keyblades also enhance gameplay because they added abilities to it, but now they're more so going towards Keyblades as a whole, and your entire structure for combat is based on your Keyblades, and as stated before by other YouTubers uh, a couple months ago, King Keyblades can be leveled up, and the more you level them up, the more combat uses you have for them so that's the first part of the interview uh, now we're going to look at the second part of the interview I know this seems long but bear with me please every eye question it seems that every world is able to embody a different style and type of gameplay Mount Olympus Rapunzel's Forest and the Monsters Inc factory show great uh, for uh, verticality and ample spaces. In Toy Story, everything seems focused on freedom of action, even driving mecha-style toys. In the Arendelle, distances can be covered by speed travel skiing with Goofy Shield. In Pirates of the Caribbean, finally, we have naval battles and underwater explorations. Talk to us about the process of creating each world and how you've come to translate these Disney realities into gameplay. Nomura stated, For this chapter, the development team put a large number of ideas on the paper. 
Starting with the flow of proposals received from all the staff, I then added my own personal ideas to ensure that the concepts achieved a certain degree of completeness. This does not mean that the ideas of the other developers didn't play an important role. Indeed, when originally we began to select the roles that we would have put in the game, I personally asked each of them to propose to me a presentation illustrating how each world should be played. The final selection, which of course rewarded the best ideas, of which Disney realities would be part of the final game, took place on the basis of this criterion. Every Eye then, then stated, Let's talk about the gummy ships. From the videos shown so far, it seems to be the only feature that has not been particularly revolutionized. Can we expect any surprises in this sense? How much space will this feature have? In the first game, the gummy ship had a strong symbolic significance. In the second chapter of the series, however, it ended up becoming kind of an amusement park attraction. Uh, this time, however, and I should say this, this is actually uh, I, I know I, I can understand exactly what he's talking about because in Kingdom Hearts 1 there, there really were no ideas of using darkness to travel I mean there was but it was stated to be very dangerous uh, and the only way you can get from world to world was by the gummy ship so yeah it, it is basically just for story and symbolic significance and then since in Kingdom Hearts 2 they made gummy ships more flashy and entertaining and something like that um it, it, it i guess i guess he's right in saying it was kind of like an amusement park attraction this time however the space in which you move the the spaceship will seem to be much more expanded and very similar to the map of a role-playing game clearly we've added some customization options and reproposed the shooting sections which make the gummy ship what it is but we have introduced a number of new elements thanks to a specific section of the development team that worked on it. Basically, the element of exploration is now much deeper. So, from what I'm understanding, because I really haven't read that much about the gummy ship, maybe you guys can correct me in the comment section below, but uh, it seems that you're sort of somewhat free, I won't say entirely free, but somewhat free when you're going from world to world uh, with the gummy ship, because in Kingdom Hearts 1, you when you pick something on the map the gummy ship wasn't even present it was, it was like you were picking picking something from an actual map and then like a paper map and then as soon as you pick it you're on that set course of course they were there were ways to you know go to a different place than what you originally like designated to go like if you went to a crossroad in the world and you chose to go right instead of left then that'd be that'd be one thing and also when you pass by a warp gate that's also another thing but other than that once you pick a world you're basically heading straight to that no no other way and then in kingdom hearts 2 you picked a you had to go through a gate which was the muse the amusement park attraction thing that namora was talking about you clear that and then you're free to go to that world without having to do really anything so i don't know that that's just what i'm taking from this uh Last thing, every eye question. Regarding the localization, what are the times and, and the difficulties of adapting, of adaptation and translation of a work such as Kingdom Hearts 3, which collaborates closely with local franchises of Final Fantasy and with the Western brand as important as Disney and the attached anim animation brands? Namora stated, the biggest challenge is not so much the differences between the Kingdom Hearts franchise and the other brands. When I direct a game, I ask for translations to be as direct and faithful as possible, no matter how complex the subject is. This implies the, the question of which of the two localization, Japanese or English, is the best. The truth is, especially for Kingdom Hearts, an incorrect or defective translation risks compromising the comprehension of the whole story. And this is why I care about it so much. On the other side of the scale, however, I understand the dynamics that characterize the team's approach to the location of the game, which are quite complicated. After all, it is not an issue I can deal with firsthand, therefore I prefer leaving dealing with this problem with the this problems I think that's a translation error to others so 
thank you to Aquaberry for uh, translating this whole interview for Cage 13. Uh, you guys can go check it out yourself. I'll leave a link in the description below. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Hope you guys check out my Twitter. Uh, hope you guys rate, comment, subscribe. Hope you guys sponsor my channel. Uh, this has been Noir Low Bomber, and I'm out. <laughs>